going to hang up this phone, and then I'm going to show these people who you don't want them to see. Because he's getting absolutely obliterated here by a flat earther. I mean, this is a thrashing of the highest order, and we just started. Welcome to Mindshock. This is your host, Bruce McGuire. Today, we are doing a logical analysis of the highly anticipated and much chastised so-called debate with flat earther David Weiss and so-called Professor Dave. <laughs> yeah. This is a uh, this is the first time um I think a real flat earther, I'll call myself a real flat earther, or, um, has spoken direct with, uh, with Professor Dave as he normally does videos, you know, that just go out and uh, pretty much straw man us, whether you know it or not, or gaslight us. And then there's really no way to respond because. No, so you've never seen my channel ever and have no idea what I do because I no, make no, no. academic I... tutorials. <laughs> so. Okay, how would we phrase that? Is that a logical fallacy there? Actually, we forgot one more. There's appeal to humor. So the appeal to humor logical fallacy is uh, the use of humor to ridicule an opponent and or direct attention away from the issue at hand. In Latin, this is called argumentum ad festivatum and reductio ad absurdum. Like name-calling, red herring, and straw man, the appeal to humor is a fallacy that manipulates through distraction. So, I mean, I don't know. Let's. I'm going to avoid putting anything on the counter thus far because we're still in the intro, so I guess this wouldn't be part of the debate. But he, again, Dave, right off the bat, I mean, Flat Earth Dave here has made a claim that uh, so-called Professor Dave has st straw man's uh, the flat earthers' arguments in order to appear to debunk them, which is actually true if you look at uh, his channel. And uh, Professor Dave responds with so sarcastically, again, sarcasm, a form of humor, that he hasn't seen his channel as if he doesn't do this. Now, neither one actually demonstrated exactly how they do that. So even though Flat Earth Dave is technically correct here, I'm going to give Professor Dave the benefit of the doubt since the formal debate has not officially started and we're still on the intros. I won't put that on the counters. I have. I have. But 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 your your flat earth stuff is um, mm -hmm. is gaslighting us. Essentially. It's so, devastating I, and destroys well, yeah, flat earth easily. Ab absolutely. So, <laughs> I started I was I, I, big I was straw man. Oh, he says that they think the earth is flat. What a you know straw what? man. Oh man, so that's obviously not the straw man. <laughs> so he just straw man the allegations on the straw man. <laughs> I'm gonna have to, we're starting it now because I actually can't recall anyone in a debate ever straw manning on top of a straw man like Professor Dave just did. For Professor Dave, right out of the gate, just because it was a straw man on top of the straw man, I gave him a benefit of the doubt on the first one, but now we're firmly in straw man logic fallacy. I'm, I'm with you, listen. I don't mean to come off that way. Would it be okay to look for some common ground? Can I just ask a couple of quick questions, Dave? You that? <laughs> Whatever you want to do, man. Yeah, I'm just just for you know to see if we have any common ground. Do you believe we went to the moon? Yeah. Okay. Do you believe that governments are here, especially the American government, for the people's well-being? That's oh. a pretty complicated question. <laughs> okay, you don't have to answer. That's fine. That's a, that, that's good. Um, do you believe that there's censorship going on on YouTube? Yes. Uh, some stuff is deprioritized in the algorithm. I don't yeah. know if that qualifies as censorship. <laughs> deprioritized. So he's saying that there is no censorship. So there's a clear difference here. So this is obfuscation. You could classify this under red herring because clearly YouTube flat out removes content, which is censorship. He's talking about now. He he's obfuscating by saying that there is deprioritization deprioritizing which is also true this is kind of a form of shadow batting or not recommending certain subjects or whatever or being very selective where con certain so-called controversial subjects 
you will get the attempted debunking, whether or not the debunking is valid or not on many controversial issues. That'll come up first when you search certain topics. And the debunking of those debunkings will never come up when you search those. They will not be prioritized. So what Professor Dave just said is technically true. So that's two logical fallacies for Professor Dave at this moment. Now, how could he not know that YouTube censors and flat out removes? This is, I'm assuming this is dishonesty. Now, again, I don't know. Perhaps Professor Dave has a mental disability and he is being honest and he simply does not have the processing power. I'm not going to assume to know uh, what his psychological issues are or whether he's arguing in good faith and or playing stupid and not arguing in good faith or whether he's actually that dumb. I don't know. And uh, is the news here to inform or to fill us with propaganda? Uh, the news is largely propaganda. None right. of that has anything to do with the shape of the earth. So I don't know what the hell you're even talking about. Literally none of that has to do with the shape of the earth. So <laughs> Now, Sean Atwood definitely looks like a guy with a mental disability. Because <laughs> why is he laughing? <laughs> Clearly, because we're talking about appeals to authority, scientism, these uh, corrupt institutions that run universities and media platforms. I mean, this is all common knowledge to anybody who's not a complete... Uh, religious fanatic in terms of a th being an authority worshiping cultist who never questions anything coming from perceived authorities. But Sean Atwood here, I mean, if he's listening to this, I mean, he chooses that moment to laugh hysterically. <laughs> I mean, he might not be all there in the head. I mean, this is shaping up to be quite entertaining. Just looking for some common ground. That's all. Mm. Oh, so if we Sean, both so don't like the government, therefore the earth is flat. <laughs> wow. Another straw man. <laughs> Fallacy number three, because that's clearly not what Dave would Dave uh, flat earth. Dave clearly outlined his intention of seeing if they have any common ground in order. He's going to I'm assuming he wanted to build arguments off of that or even if not, even just small talk, making conversation at the beginning. And now, Professor Dave, I mean, you could put that. I'm not going to give him two fallacies here because, again, he's trying to be humorous with the straw man. Um, and technically it is both. But. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and just put it in as a straw man because a lot of straw men are funny. So uh, technically, to keep this as accurate as possible, appeals to humor will be, I will put fallacies there that are not also other fallacies. So I'm, I'm not going to double up on that one. So, so, the, so, the yeah. common, so the common ground is then we're going to try and keep um, talking points to three minutes each, uh, responses to two or three minutes each so we could get through this hour and everyone could get an equal share of the time involved here. And I think the first point that we've got up on the list is, what is gravity? You want to go first, Dave, or you want me to go? Oh, okay. We're, this is how we're doing this? Uh, okay, so according to general relativity, it's the curvature of space-time around massive objects. Uh, and so this is uh, one of the easiest ways to know that the Earth is a sphere because everything we see, everything, including the Earth, uh, right, very large, massive objects are crushed into a sphere. That's why stars, planets, moons, everything pretty much is spheres. So uh, you can now go ahead and do your, like, electric, electric gravity bullshit, and then I'll explain to you why it's stupid. Okay, so we have two fallacies there because notice how he didn't provide the proof for, he just listed the theory. So that, again, a couple different fallacies there. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. So he has components here of a compositional logical fallacy as well as the reification logical fallacy. I'm going to put it under reification just because he started mentioning all the other planetary bodies as if it's all interdependent and as, as if it proves something it doesn't actually prove. And he also didn't prove the theory true in the first place because even if it is true, that doesn't mean it applies to all these other things. So we're going to put it in reification there. And then we have to do another one because he added the ad hom here. Since he didn't prove his point and provide evidence, we are going to add the ad hom. Just to clarify, I will not be adding the ad hom if he pro produces a non-fallacious argument and adds the ad hom on top of it. So another fallacy here for Professor Dave. This might be a record most fallacies in least amount of time so far. 
Uh, and uh, Flat Earth Dave is doing pretty good here. Not a single fallacy yet. I've seen a couple of his other debates. He's He actually does use a lot of fallacies as well, but let's see how good he does here. Well, the, the question is, does anybody have, you know, any scientists or anybody that's ever proven that any of the luminaries we see in the sky are even physical, let alone spheres? Yeah, we can see them in telescopes. You can we see can... them. In so you believe that if you see, um, you see something that that'll, that'll tell you its shape. So when I look at this, are these spheres? Oh. Are these spheres? Dave, are these spheres? Yeah, no, I've seen this little trick and I know it's, the it's third one from trick. the left it's... is flat. So Professor Dave here just committed a fallacy. We actually didn't even go over this one. Man, there's just so many fallacies. The fallacy of the single cause or the reduction fallacy. So this is a fallacy that assumes there can only be a single cause. So things can only be what they look like or something that looks like a circle has to be a sphere this is of course not true this is an oversimplification for example if you see train tra tracks touch in the distance that doesn't mean they actually touch just because they look like they touch things are not always what they appear so is professor dave does he have some kind of mental disability that he doesn't know this so see he says oh you can see it through a telescope that is clearly and obviously a reductive fallacy oversimplification because things are obviously not always what they look like and this goof says i've seen this trick as if it's a trick <laughs> he's so flat earth dave here is trying to teach some children's level logic that things are not always what they appear and just because something looks like something you actually have to provide evidence that it actually is otherwise you're committing these logical fallacies i mean professor dave i mean it really looks like he's gonna be the king of logical fallacies here because he's committing it's just one fallacy after another i mean has he made a single non-fallacious point yet and we just i mean we just started he's already committed all these fallacies Let's and and calling this a trick as opposed to a legitimate explanation. I mean, that would also be an ad hom here. I mean, are we going to give it ad hom or or strong? Like he's pretending this is some kind of great exception. I mean, clearly things are not always what they appear. I mean, that's where the old adages come from. Don't judge a book by its cover. I mean, again, the example of convergence, the way the human's eye works, he, just because you hear, you can hear something you think is a gunshot, but it's actually a car backfiring. So what you hear or see, what you think it means is not necessarily what it actually means based on reality. I mean, that's why the scientific method was invented. So you can prove it's what it appears to be to you. I mean, observation is important, but you need to be able to measure. You need to have controls, which is what Dave, which is what Flat Earth Dave is showing here. Like, how would you know the difference between something that looks like a circle? Because if it can be any of these things, you have to utilize controls. You have to prove. You have to utilize the scientific me method. You have to be able to accurately measure, not hallucinate that whatever you think you see has to be true. <laughs> and Professor Dave, I mean, is he this clueless? Can he actually be this dumb or is he playing stupid? So calling this a trick, I mean, that's an ad hom because he's not showing how it's not legitimate. He's just calling it a trick. So we have to add another fallacy there. It's showing no, you. See, the third, wait, here's the, the third problem. One from the left is fat. Dave, let me, let me, give me a second. Then you can go. No, because I've seen what? you do this because I watched what? two of your videos and you say the same crap in every single one. Right. I but know what, what these are. I know what these shapes these are. So, so that's another ad hom. <laughs> he's calling it crap without showing why it's crap. See, if he demonstrated why flat earth dave's explanation here that even children can understand things are not always what they appear to be and again the burden of proof is on positive claims i mean we could also i mean we could add that as a fallacy too again i don't want to double up on these i want to give professor dave here as much of a benefit of a doubt as possible i mean if he's has some kind of mental disability i mean he's going to need these benefits of doubt because he's getting absolutely obliterated here by a flat earther i mean this is a thrashing of the highest order and we just started 
I mean, how long is this podcast going to be if I have to keep stopping it for every fallacy? I mean, these fallacies just keep on coming. I mean, here's a good, here's a good, uh, all the Mindshock listeners out there, how many people think that Professor Dave is going to make a single argument that's not fallacious? Or is every single argument in this upcoming hour, are they all going to be fallacious? Or is he going to be able to get one or two in that are non-fallacious? I mean, that's the real question at this point. Here, during, here's a, a, during a new moon, no one yeah, sees I, I the moon in the sky. I, I know your talking points. So the reason, so this works because that's not moving. The things in the sky move. So if you take the third one from the left, which I know is flat, and you move it around, it's going to start to change shape, right? If the moon was a flat disk, I don't even know if that's one of your talking points or not. As it passed over you, it would change shape. It would, I don't it think would the distort. moon is a flat disk at all. Okay, so it doesn't matter though. That's why what you're saying is stupid because these objects do not move. So hold on, so there, wow, that was a lot of fallacies there too. So he's saying if something in the distance moves, that's gonna prove shape, which again, <laughs> How would that prove, like, it, it's kind of weird because how would it prove it? See, that's the thing. When you're being scientific, you can't just say things. You have to clearly explain how it would do that. Not just saying, oh, when there's this variable, that means this. So that would be a false dichotomy or black and white logical fallacy because he's stating movement versus non-movement and those are the only explanations where if it moves, it has to be this. If it doesn't move, then maybe it could be this or that clearly fallacious now the other problem is it's not just about shape it's about other things like composition do you know what spectroscopy is yeah spectroscopy is you, you can measure gases but it has to be in a container where's the container <laughs> no 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 stop 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 we are in we're looking at light we're looking at light and we are understanding about the materials right we're understanding the composition of things based on light so when you start talking about gases you uh you, sh you show me immediately that you don't even know what spectroscopy is Wow. So already Professor Dave is making a fool of himself because spectroscopy specifically has to do with gases. I mean, we're, let's, let's dumb this down as simple as possible. Like, let's go to like wiki children's level definition here. So spectroscopy is the general field of study that measures and interprets the electromagnetic spectra that result from the interaction between electromagnetic radiation and matter as a function of the wavelength or frequency of the radiation. Now, I'm not convinced that Professor Dave even knows what matter is. So, I mean, let's do a basic definition of matter just here, just to, to lay it all out there. The substance, this is straight from Webster's, the substance of which a physical object is composed or a, a more in-depth definition here, material substance that occupies space, has mass, and is composed predominantly of atoms consisting of protons, neutrons, and electrons that constitute the observable universe, and that is interconvertible with energy. So the states of matter are solids, liquids, gases, and plasmas. So this is not hard stuff, okay? So spectroscopy is the precise study of color as generalized from visible light to all bands of the electromagnetic spectrum. Historically, spectroscopy originated as the study of wavelength dependence on the absorption by gas phase matter of visible light dispersed by a prism. So when you start talking about gases, you, uh, you, sh you show me immediately that you don't even know what spectroscopy is. So what Flat Earth Dave here, the reason he's talking about gases is because the Flat Earthers argue, their argument about gas pressure and containers. So in the vacuum of space, you're talking either a no pressure system or a super extreme low pressure system in order for the pressurized system we have on earth with earth's atmosphere again i am not going to allege any of these theories are true or untrue on either side of this theoretically you would have to have a container 
for these pressurized systems to exist next to each other as in space, as in within the Earth's atmosphere. So what this goof professor Dave, he's not understanding so because he doesn't understand something, he's getting all triggered or he's pretending not to understand. Again, I don't know if he has a mental disability or if he's just playing stupid. But the reason Dave, Flat Earth Dave is bringing this up is because it's directly relevant to the type of matter and gases that would exist. Now, the spectroscopy is simply measuring it. Now, exactly how it's measured and what it is measuring, it doesn't tell you why it is that way. So this is a fundamental flaw of scientism cultists because they just latch on to whatever religious institutions, the, the religious institutions of scientism, whatever they preach in their gospel textbooks, they just latch on. So nobody's disputing the measurements here. Now, why is it that way? For example, you can measure, oh, there's a teaspoon in a cup. Who put it there? Why is it there? I mean, all of these, you know, exactly where did it come from? Why does it exist? Does it mean that this other thing's... So the measurement itself doesn't prove the why or how it got there or any of these other mechanisms. So that's what this goof Professor Dave, he's not understanding this, so he's just stacking on these fallacies and ad homs because he doesn't even understand Flat Earth Dave's argument. Now, that doesn't mean his argument is correct in any way. But Professor Dave, clearly too clueless, too mentally disabled, or playing stupid to even understand the argument, so he has to pretend and hallucinate that Dave, that Flat Earth Dave is the one that doesn't understand. So, I mean, let's continue this train wreck here. So you do not know the ways in which we figure out things about celestial objects. You literally don't even know the definitions of the words that represent the techniques that we use. So this is stacking on because it seems like Flat Earth Dave actually knows the definitions better than Professor Dave. Because <laughs> Professor Dave memorized, he can memorize and regurgitate certain things, but he doesn't understand what they mean in relation to other things. He doesn't know what controls are. He's not even utilizing the basic scientific method. He's just regurgitating religious texts. Now, again, that doesn't mean it's untrue. It does not mean any of the theories are untrue, but he's not showing how they are true, which is why... All of these uh, ad hom attacks and straw mans. I mean, I don't even know where to place all these fallacies. Because now he's hallucinating and pretending to know what Flat Earth Dave knows when he just interrupted him and didn't even hear him out. So how does he know what he knows? <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, this is straw man on top of ad hom. And, I mean, you could even rope in Red Herring there again. I mean, he's shifting everything away from having to prove his actual point. So why are you even talking about it? So my, my question is, spectro spectroscopy needs to be in a container. Otherwise, you don't know what Spectroscopy needs to be in a container. The study of how light interacts with matter needs to be in a container. Other, what does that mean? You... <laughs> well, it's pretty simple because, so, okay. Prisms are actually a little bit more complicated. So again, let's reiterate what spectroscopy is. It is the precise study of color as generalized from visible light to all bands of the electromagnetic spectrum. Historically, spectroscopy originated as the study of wavelength dependence by the absorption of gas phase matter of visible light dispersed by a prism. Now, otherwise, when you're looking at the moon, you don't know what gases you're seeing in between us and the moon. gases. The moon is solid. The moon is a solid object. How do you know that the moon is solid? OK, so, wow. I mean, I think I'm going to break the logical fallacy counter. He's claiming the moon is a solid object. I mean, I'm going to throw that under burden of proof logical fallacy because what evidence does he have to prove that because by his own argumentation and i'm not using this as an argument but the moon certainly does look translucent and before he 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 was the same goof that made the argument oh well it looks like a sphere well the moon looks translucent now i'm not claiming it is just because it looks like it's transparent translucent and not a solid object if it is a gas how would you know so again he's the one making the claim whereas flat earth dave is kind of saying you don't know what it is it could be a gas so technically flat earth dave is not committing fallacies if he's not making these hard claims and then not being able to back them up which is uh professor dave's forte because he hasn't backed anything up yet how come you can't see it during a new moon How? why can't you see it during a new moon yeah because do you understand how vision works well, right 
And a new moon. What's happening in a new moon? The There's light no from the sun. The you sun wait. is illuminating the side of away from us. So, right? Light illuminates the things that it hits. So a new moon is when the side that the sun is illuminating is the other side away from us. What they, do you they, want it to do? The light to go around the moon and come back and so, hit the other side like magic? Yeah. So again, he's not able to, he's giving his theory. He's regurgitating the scientism textbook, which could be correct. Again, I know there's so many triggered goofs listening to this, so I'm going to try to preempt as much as possible. I am not saying that is not true, but how can he prove that is what is happening? Again, so he's calling vision. So again, he's basically making, I mean, there's so many logical fallacies here. Fallacious point yet. Without interrupting, let me just uh, answer. The, when we have a, uh, when there's, when it's nighttime, you're in the, away from all lights and there's a full moon, I can read by that moonlight. That moonlight uh -huh. casts a shadow on the ground. Don't interrupt. Uh -huh. That casts a shadow on the ground. So that moonlight, which is reflected sunlight off a dusty, dirty, rocky, you know, rock ball yeah. in your world, is bright enough to travel 238,000 miles to cast a shadow on the ground and to light up my book so I can read. During a total solar eclipse in your world, the Earth is a full Earth from the moon's point of view. It's bigger and shinier, and it should light up the moon, but it doesn't, and no telescope, no from any position with the infrared or anything has ever seen the moon. Can you think of why? Can you think of why? Can you think of a much, much brighter object that is right there where the moon is? Well, during the corona total, of the sun, which is thousands of times brighter, what you're doing right now is you're basically saying, I'm going to shine a spotlight directly into your eyes. And then you tell me if you can see a firefly two centimeters to the right. Like, wh what are you talking about? What? <laughs> so this is known as a non sequitur logical fallacy, a.k.a. non congruent argument logical fallacy, a statement that does not follow what was being discussed. <laughs> so that's obviously not what Flat Earth Dave was saying at all. But this goof has to pretend it was so... It's kind of sort of like a straw man, but basically he j but he specifically gave another example, which was non-congruent. Do you Dave, seriously what? not understand this stuff? A child can understand so, this stuff. <laughs> so we got a lot of psychological projection there. <laughs> so, I mean, are we going to add psychological projection there? I mean, yeah, it's, that's a tough one. But that was also basically an ad hom attack because he, again, just basically calling him stupid in that way. So that's just another ad hom. So when you're throwing out words like spectroscopy, what's the difference uh -huh. between, between spectroscopy and astro spectroscopy? <laughs> what do you mean astro? So astro is a prefix that means stars. So if that's even a word, it's spectroscopy pertaining to stars. If that's even a word. So, so obviously spectroscopy refers to uh, measuring light of all matter, not necessarily specifically to celestial bodies. So this goof just said before, if you don't even know the word, why are you talking about it? So he doesn't even know. So he's just throwing a wild guess out there. I mean, oh man, this is embarrassing for so-called Professor Dave. I mean, this goof is making such a fool of himself. I mean, nonstop fallacies, and then he doesn't even know the specific, because they're talking about spectroscopy as it pertains to celestial bodies, which is obviously astro spectroscopy. So, <laughs> man, what a goof. What are you, like, Googling stuff furiously over there? I'm just asking you, you know, I've, I've taken a few notes. I... Well, he could clearly see Flat Earth Dave's arms, so how could he be Googling? <laughs> the desperation of, uh, of Professor Dave here. I mean, what kind of fallacy would that be? I mean, would that be an appeal to humor because he's trying to kind of embarrass him as if he's just... I mean, clearly you could see his arms. I mean, what would he be Googling with? <laughs> figured out. I watch a few of your videos. I know mm -hmm. the, the straw manning that you're going to try to do and the things that you're going to try to claim. And in reality, you know, an infrared camera, a regular camera from the space station, they should be able to see the sun, the moon, either approach the sun, uh, eclipse the sun completely or uh, exit the sun. And nobody has ever seen it. So again, why are we looking up in the sky? Are we sure about that, though, that nobody has seen that infrared? I mean, Again, the burden of proof is on positive claims, but he made an absolute claim that nobody has seen that. Now, again, I don't know. 
uh, if such footage exists, that infrared footage, because he made a good point, that should happen. Do we know if it happened or it didn't happen? He made the claim that it did not. Now, obviously, one is not called upon to prove a negative. So it's up to Professor Dave to prove if it did happen. So, yeah, I can't... That's a problematic absolute claim by Flat Earth Dave, but technically it's not logically fallacious because one is not called upon to prove a negative. And yeah, I just explained it. I just Earth. answered your question. You just answered it again. You asked a question that I just answered. What's the that? sun is very bright, right? Way, way, way brighter than Earthshine. Do you understand that if something very bright, you're looking at something very bright, you can't see something way less bright? So he doesn't understand infrared. <laughs> <laughs> so this goof so he's basically trying to say that flat earth dave just asked the same question and when he did not answer the question specifically he f fell for this uh he gave a non sequitur example and he also gave a reductionist uh, logical fallacy where oh it looks like it whatever and uh, so he's just got i mean is this guy mentally disabled i mean do people know does anybody know professor dave personally like does he have a mental disability because, I mean, or is he just plain stupid? So this is why some people believe the whole Flat Earth conspiracy is a psyop. That goofs like Flat Earth Dave, uh, that goofs like Professor Dave are specifically recruited to defend the heliocentric globe so poorly to appear so stupid that anybody on the fence would choose the Flat Earth side or anybody... You know, because the defense is intentionally so bad and so logically fallacious, like goofs like Professor Dave, Sign Man, Dan. I mean, I actually did a podcast on these two goofs. They def it's almost like, is it possible to be th to play this stupid? Again, this has nothing to do with which model is true or untrue, because regardless of true or untrue, if there's a psyop at play, is that one of the goals of the psyop? But let's continue with this train wreck here. Right Dave, next to when it. There's a what total, are you not getting about that? When there's a total eclipse of the sun and you have the you know the, the little ring around there, you can block that out so it doesn't blind you and you still can't see it. You know what? It Why doesn't block it out. The, the corona. The sky? Have Why you never seen an eclipse? Why are we talking? You can make a fake eclipse, right? By putting a disc in front of the sun and then looking at the corona. And you could do the same thing with the corona. You can block it. Why yeah, are it's we looking really up bright. at the lights in the ceiling that determine the shape of the floor? Because it works really well. It's the easiest way to figure out the shape of the Earth is by looking at the celestial ob objects in the sky and recording their motion. <laughs> so if you have a ro rotating uh, lights on the ceiling, like some kind of uh, chandelier, like a spinning chandelier, how would that prove the shape of the floor? I mean, this guy's this silly. I mean, is it, I'm having a hard time believing that he's this dumb for real. I mean, because if he's that mentally disabled, I mean, his vocabulary isn't horrible. I mean, can he really be this mentally disabled and be arguing honestly in good faith here? Because he's this dumb. He doesn't understand children's level logical fallacies. Because he just keeps going with these reductionism logical fallacies. And um, I'm not going to say false dichotomy because it's, it's basically in the, in the realm of reduction logical fallacies. He's saying these things move, therefore this. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> as, if no, as if no other variables could possibly exist. I mean, it's so silly. I mean, he's never been to a planetarium. Like, I mean, it's just weird. I mean, this guy calls himself Professor Dave. And he can't even grasp children's level logical fallacies. It's weird. One it's second. very, very one, easy. One second. Ash, Ash has said we've got to move on to the next talking point, which is <laughs> space is not as depicted, displayed in media, movies, etc. Flat Earth Dave, do you want to start with that one? Ask the question again, please. Space is not as depicted, displayed in media, movies. Yeah, I mean, space... Spaces, they're just you know giving us images of of insanity in space. Like when they show us um you know nebulas, right? They they show us this and they tell us this is where stars are born. This is where there's gas and dust, so much of it that it's creating stars and spitting them out like ping pong balls, where they go run away and they park themselves in the rest of the galaxy. This gas and dust in space in a vacuum 
in zero pressure. How does that work? How come this doesn't collapse in on itself? This is just it a does. That's how stars are born. Yeah, they so, do collapse. It's yeah, so, how stars form. So this is clearly uh, Professor Dave just jumped in here with the burden of proof logical fallacy. So he's claiming that's how stars form. But how is that demonstrated? Because uh, flatters Dave's point here is these uh, computer generated images or at least somehow edited. I mean, these are not I don't believe they're even claimed to be raw images. And if they are claimed to be raw, again, that would have to be proven that they are not edited. So Professor Dave just takes it on blind faith from the Church of NASA or any of these other institutions that these are legitimate images and also that the theory of how stars are formed are legitimate because, I mean, how, it's, it's very difficult. Again, the burden of proof is on positive claims. If you're claiming billions of years causes this, X amount of energy causes this, gravity is not only real, but this is how it interacts with all of these other things, and this is how star, a star is born, you have to prove that. So this is clearly a burden of proof logical fallacy. Flat Earth Dave here is basically saying, is just asking questions of the theory. I don't believe he's making a positive claim per se. He's just kind of saying, this is silly, or this doesn't make sense. But I don't see a positive claim yet. So I don't know. Has Flat Earth Dave made a single fallacy yet? Because he is ask, he's properly asking for a burden of proof of positive claims. Now, he did make that comment about spitting out ping pong, ping pong balls. That's kind of an appeal to humor. But he's also asking he's properly utilizing burden of proof. So that wouldn't necessarily be fallacious in that context. And Professor Dave is not able to supply the proof. He just says, oh, that's how it is. <laughs> true or untrue dave in your world this is gases are collapsing upon themselves and then yeah. igniting themselves in a vacuum in a in a in a vacuum and then they they, they this is no 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 stop stop it, look, look I, I know that you want to just spew your script without anybody challenging but you say so many I stupid no things script, David. oh there's another ad hom because he's not sure how are they stupid because he's asking a question. Asking a question is never stupid. Asking for someone to satisfy the burden of proof on a logical or scientific argument they're making. How is that stupid? <laughs> but a clueless goof might think it's stupid. Someone hopelessly indoctrinated into the cult of scientism who has no argument and cannot argue legitimately. I, they have no recourse but call it stupid. I mean, look at this goof. And I'm here to tell you why everything you're saying is stupid. Well, notice how he didn't actually say why it was stupid. He just used a logical. He used an, a logical fallacy or an appeal to faith, in order to say that this is true or that. But he's not actually showing how is it true. How has the scientific method demonstrated that? How have controls been clearly utilized to 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 measure the dependent variable, the independent variable, and that this theory is actually true? Notice how he's done none of those things this entire time. So when you say stars igniting in a vacuum, the reason that's confusing for you is that you think stars are little bonfires. No, because you're a moron. <laughs> so clearly, he doesn't think that. <laughs> I mean, he's clearly stated they might be holograph. Oh, they might not. You know, they might be holographic projections or whatever. Um, so he just layered on a straw man plus an ad hoc. <laughs> I mean, the rate of logical fallacies are increasing here. Professor Dave is trying to set a record for putting forth the most logically fallacious debate in the history of debate. And he's doing a pretty good job with that so far. Because no, you don't understand you, nuclear you, fusion. You nuclear the, fusion is the process by which stars glow. Oh, wow. It's just nonstop fallacies. So now Professor Dave is regurgitating an, some another religious theory from his text. Now, if you want to claim it's not religious and it's proven science, then you have to actually cite the proofs. Like, how is that proven? Because he's just doing the equivalent of a priest reading from the Bible. He's not actually supporting any of these claims, even if they are true. He, he hasn't been able to support a single point here. They're not little fireballs. And okay. you can learn that by Googling something for five seconds, but you don't do it. So this is an appeal to authority logical fallacy because he's saying Google's the authority, just like saying, oh, well, you could, if you don't believe God exists or, or, or Jesus was resurrected, you can, uh, you can just crack, oh, you can just five seconds go check the Bible. So Dave, Dave, 
do you believe that all the rocky bits turn into perfect balls and then all of the gases somehow start getting gravity and they start pulling it together and start they get getting big. gravity? What do you well, mean they, start they, getting how, gravity? How, how do they how do they grow into stars? How come the dust is accumulating? What's bringing it together? Somebody gravity. it up like a snowball? <laughs> so he just did. <laughs> Wait, I mean, okay, I have to revisit the possible mental disability theory. I mean, what does he mean by gravity that's causing this? And then uh, Flat Earth Dave asks him the question. He says, gravity. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know, man. This is painfully hilarious. I mean, this is a unique brand of comedy. It's like painfully hilarious. Gravity. So, so yeah. So, yeah. They, they, so they get something and it's a tiny bit of gravity, pulls in some more dust. It pulls in, the, not dust, it pulls in gases. And somehow it's pulling all of these gases together and turning into a nuclear furnace that burns for billions of years. Um, I'm sorry, that doesn't make any sense. And if you okay, want to so, that, so, that's so, world. so centuries of brilliant astronomers versus no, uh, <laughs> another solid appeal to authority, logical fallacy. So, and he's he also roped in there appeal to popularity because he's saying all these centuries, all these people. So it's not just one authority; it's all these authorities over a long period of time somehow they're legitimate because centuries of people believing in God, that must be in God is real. I mean, centuries of these, of these priests believe there, right? <laughs> All you have is the entire field of astronomy and you going, mm, that's, I don't like it. <laughs> so that's another straw man and burden of proof. Cause obviously that's not, all he has he's he's made tons of arguments so that's another straw man <laughs> all you have is the entire field of astronomy and you going mm, that's i don't like it <laughs> so that's another straw man and burden of proof because obviously that's not all he has he's he's made tons of arguments so that's another straw man <laughs> And and uh, shifting of the burden of proof, logical fallacy, because no matter how many and he all and that's built on top of the appeal to authority, appeal to popularity, logical fallacy. I mean, Professor Dave really is talented. You have to give it to him. He's not only rapid fire fallacy after back to back fallacies in record order, but he's also stacking multiple fallacies within the same argumentative stream here. So his argument, he's stacked all these fallacies on top of each other. I mean, this is impressive stuff. That's dumb. I'm dumb and I don't get it. So astronomy is wrong. That's Dave. that's literally your argument against astronomy you, right you, now. You. And then another ad hom there. And then also saying literally what he's doing, which is clearly not what he's doing. <laughs> so another straw man there. You never met these men. You don't know anything about these men other than the stories that the controllers yeah. of this world tell you. You know they wrote books, right? Well, you know so they wrote books that so, we can read. So that's another shifting the burden of proof fallacy because how does he know those particular guys wrote the books? He took it on faith. Just because you can read a book, that doesn't mean you could read the Bible. Well, I mean, that's, you know, like you could say, oh, well, the Bible is the word of God. You can read it. You know you can read it, right? You know the Bible was written, and it, you know the Bible's the word of God, right? I mean, that's how clueless Professor Dave is coming off here. I mean, this is tough. This is really tough. And then but, we base astronomy on that and do astronomy every Dave, day, Dave, right? Dave. So that would be a reification logical fallacy because he, he created this construct of astronomy as if it's concrete, as if... All of the theories of astronomy must be true because astronomy has been done for X period of time and is done now. So, yeah, again, impressive stream of logical fallacies from Professor Dave. Try not to interrupt. Aristophanes figured out the, the shadow. Eratosthenes. The, Eratosthenes figured out the, the, the diameter, the, the circumference of the Earth with his sticks and shadows. Uh -huh. But nobody in that area that came out of that other mathematicians never wrote any books about him. They ignored him. They just never mentioned it, and then all of a sudden it shows up in the 1900s in books okay. that go well, into the education system. that's not true. I and, mean, and, if you're just going to lie, wait, then wait, we can just and, play the lie game. And, and Dave. <laughs> How is that not true? Does he have a single source to disprove that? So, I mean, the, the, yeah, so Flat Earth Dave is not making the positive claim here. He's saying we can't prove this guy existed. How do we know that he really existed? Professor Dave comes in and he just accuses him of lying, which is an ad hom attack, basically calling him a liar. And yet, 
not citing the proof. See, if he had cited the other individuals who wrote about this guy or verifications and then called him a liar after that, that would be okay and it wouldn't be an ad hom because he clearly said, although and it still might because if in order to be a liar, you're basically giving information you know is not true, right? So if, if he would believe it was true, technically he wouldn't be a liar. He would just be putting forth false information. But either way, notice how Professor Dave never backs up any points. He just called them a liar without actually naming all those other individuals. Now, I actually don't know who mentioned this guy or didn't mention this guy or whatever, but these are I'm just exposing the fallacies here because, again, if one understands the burden of proof logical fallacy, one is not called upon to prove a negative. So you don't have to prove someone didn't exist. But if you're saying someone existed, that's a positive claim. So you have to prove that they existed and they wrote what they wrote if you're claiming that. What, uh, what about um, the fact that that proves nothing? It works perfectly on a flat earth. Sticks and shadows prove the earth is flat. And it proves it's a globe. See, that's a great example of not using logical fallacies because notice how Flat Earth Dave did not exclusively focus on the sticks and shadows proving a flat Earth because, again, you're going to assume variables. You're going to assume size of the sun, distance of the sun, all of these assumptions that you're using to make a conclusion if you're doing that to make your conclusion. I don't know if Professor Dave is going to defend that or not, but... If Dave had claimed that, that would have been the false cause logical fallacy because all of these unknown variables, the relationship of those variables might not be what is assumed due to other variables. So if Flat Earth Dave had claimed it proves only a Flat Earth, he'd be guilty of that. If Professor Dave claims that definitely proves Globe Earth only, then he will be guilty of that, so let's see. But you'd have to assume parallel rays. Listen to this. Aristotle believed that parallel rays are coming into Earth, right? And, and no one has ever seen parallel rays coming into Earth, right? When we look, when we look, we always see them curved. We always see them crepuscular. But he also believed that the Earth was geocentric and we had an infinitely far sun. Also, let's see if Professor Dave can address the crepuscular rays argument. Uh, there, there is a pretty decent crepuscular rays argument in favor of the heliocentric globe to an extent. Uh, let's see if Professor Dave knows it or if he's clueless. And so that sun is orbiting around a, a minuscule... Infinitely far? Well, infinitely, infinitely far. far. I, 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 uh, infinitely far means so far away that the rays come in parallel. And that's a whole other problem. But how is a distant sun orbiting around a speck Earth in the middle of... Uh, in the middle of um, you know, in the middle of space, that doesn't make sense. And they didn't think about what that. What doesn't they... make sense? What doesn't make sense about how, an earth how... orbiting a sun? What no, no, you, no, you no. going, That's that not, doesn't no, make sense. Dave, isn't Dave, an argument. Dave, stop being a dick. Listen to what I said. <laughs> you stop Listen. being a dick. They... I'm going to, I'm going to count that. I mean, that's an ad hom for both of them because that was, he could have just said, stop interrupting, but <laughs> the Arist Aristosthenes believed that the Earth was geocentric, that the sun orbited us, but the sun was a distant sun. And that's also another uh, a straw man for, uh, for so-called Professor Dave, because he didn't even listen carefully because this was on a geocentric globe, and he immediately jumped to, oh, how does it not make sense? Because he's so triggered, obviously, or, or just intentionally trolling, whatever the case may be, or mentally disabled, whatever. How does a distant, gigantic sun orbit a minuscule, minuscule speck Earth? Well, they, okay. Yeah, you have no answer how, for that. I, they don't know. Yeah. It's the ancient Greeks. They didn't know. Now we know, right? We figured out heliocentrism in like the Please. 16th century. So notice how he completely dodged. We're not talking about specifically just geocentrism versus heliocentrism. He's asking specifically about the angle of rays relative to that particular sticks and shadows experiment and the crepuscular rays, which Professor Dave does not address at all. <laughs> so this would fall under the red herring logical fallacy because this is a misdirection because he's clearly not addressing the point here and simply saying, oh, they were the ancient Greeks. They didn't know. Now we know. How do we know? Notice how he never backs anything up. <laughs> his story so it was like makes, 500 his, years ago. It's a pretty long story, time. His story makes no sense. And the other question is, you believe that the sun rays that come in are parallel, right? No, there. Uh, look, there. There are rays that are parallel, and then you can you can point a ray from the edge, one edge of the sun, and the other edge. Look, light is going in all directions, right? Light, 
the sun is is expelling light. It, there's there's spherical waves of light, photons in every direction, right? So, so you can you can identify parallel rays, and then you can identify one from this edge. And if, uh, if you want to talk about individual photons, you can draw paths from the edge of the sun going in one direction, the edge of the sun going in the other direction. You're trying to oversimplify things. You're trying to go, oh, it's it's crepuscular, it's all parallel, and so then this time it works for my talking point, and then another time it doesn't work for my talking my point. point is Wow, that was spot on psychological projection because that's exactly what Professor Dave just did. Because <laughs> yeah, he's saying, oh, they're just going in all directions. But what he did with his fingers there, why do they never cross then if they're going in all directions? Again, I'm not claiming anything is true or untrue. That's not part of my argument. I'm just addressing his argument. Even with his fingers, he did the paths as if they could cross. And yet we don't have crossing rays. Now, basic geometry would suggest that the sun would be close based on the clouds and the angle of light. I mean, now flat earthers claim you could just use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the distance based on the rays, but obviously uh, light beams are not, are not solid objects, so it's not quite that simple. And there's actually a really good explanation for this. Again, not necessarily proving flat Earth or globe Earth, but proving that it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, the flat Earth model being true. It could still work in a heliocentric globe model with a fairly distant sun. But again, Professor Dave doesn't, I mean, he doesn't seem to possess any kind of intelligence of any kind because he can't even bring forth this very easy answer to the uh, crepuscular rays. My point is Aristophanes' story doesn't make any sense with a distant sun orbiting a geocentric Earth. Yeah, the if you just say it doesn't make sense and stop talking, how I guess. Does... And that's what he says. Oh, it doesn't, which is exactly what Professor Dave does. Oh, it makes perfect sense. You just don't understand without actually proving anything. <laughs> so solid straw man there from Professor Dave again because... Flat Earth Dave is giving very specific examples and quite he's not just saying it doesn't make sense. He's asking for positive proof correctly, correctly asking for the burden of proof to be satisfied, of which Professor Dave can offer nothing. How does a distant sun orbit a, a geocentric Earth when the Earth is tiny and the sun is gigantic? Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. In, in your Long model? story short, it doesn't. Yeah. But so he why? was an ancient Greek and he no. didn't know heliocentrism. Wait, it doesn't? The sun, wait, what? <laughs> they didn't know when Newton under, when Newton developed yeah. Newton's law of universal gravitation, he didn't know why massive objects attract one another. So that's the circular reasoning logical fallacy, assuming they do, because he's asking why do they, but if they don't even do that, like again, you have to prove each step, this is science. This is not religion stacking where you have decks of cards, just religious claims accepting everybody to take it on faith and then ad homs when they don't instead of utilizing the scientific method with controls right he just said this is what happens and i have this this equation and we use newton's equations to do all these incredible calculations that predict the motion of objects on earth and in space he didn't know what gravity was einstein gave a better explanation the the curvature of space-time warped around massive objects which has been easily debunked by run z cow i mean he debunked it Einstein's relativity. So again, he's just kind of preaching it. Oh, well, this gospel from the Bible proves this. He doesn't show how it proves it. That would be scientific and logical. But Professor Dave, he's just a religious scientism cultist. So he can't actually defend his position using logic and reason and actual science. He can only make religious claims and ad hominem attacks. The, the curvature of space-time warped around massive objects, we're probably going to get a better model later. Just that we don't know why things happen doesn't mean we can't do science at predictive power. So as what it science? turns out, Eratosthenes and, and Ptolemy, the Ptolemaic model, was wrong. Heliocentrum, heli heliocentric model is correct. It doesn't matter that they didn't know, that they didn't know that part or that they didn't know why something happens. And notice how, again, he has no proofs for how it's proven that is correct. <laughs> also the claim that you don't need to know why something to make predictions i mean that's a pretty good i mean that's a good point there because again with the flat earth model the astrolabe the sextant all these navigators were able to predict using the flat earth model doesn't mean the flat earth model is true but you can still predict things using 
so-called faulty models or models that are not true. Now, again, Professor Dave, for whatever reason, I mean, there's just a fundamental lack of understanding of this. Now, his subconscious clearly understands because his psychological projection is quite accurate because all these things he's accusing Flat Earth Dave of, he's clearly doing himself. So this is another reductionism logical fallacy claiming that you can only predict things if it's true. And that's pretty much what he's doing here, as if the predictions must rely on some model that's true, even though he says it doesn't, but he's using that as a defense for the heliocentric globe. So that's the added hypocrisy to that on top of all of it. No, obviously, nobody's surprised on how this goof operates by now, but... <laughs> Do you not understand how science works? So, so if, he, if he was wrong and the Earth and the, were uh, a heliocentric, do you think his experiment proved your globe? Well, yeah, it did. <laughs> so clearly, the goofery here, uh, because he's, again, that was the fallacy that I mentioned before, the false cause logical fallacy. Because you can, clearly that experiment doesn't prove either model, which Flat Earth Dave openly admitted not falling for the fallacy, but the goof Professor Dave here clearly fell for the fallacy. All of those experiments proved the globe. It just Absolutely. didn't have anything to do with heliocentrism. Absolutely it proved the Earth not. is a sphere. How did it do that? <laughs> He's just, these religious citations are hilarious. Absolutely not, because on a small, on a, with a local sun, in like the Flat Earth is. And credit to Flat Earth Dave here. He's not getting flustered by this goof. Uh, he's clearly just making presentations for the, uh, the listeners and the viewers of sean atwood's podcast here it's almost like he's not even talking directly to professor dave because he knows that either professor dave is just mentally disabled he's not going to understand anything anyway or he's an intentional shill who's not going to argue in good faith and is just trolling and trying to make the worst defense possible of the heliocentric globe just for kicks and antagonization so he looks like he's just making a presentation for all the viewers nothing to do with professor dave so credit to uh flat earth dave for realizing who he's dealing with here um, we have no shadow here, and we have a shadow here, and then you could do, you know, your math and figure out what uh, what the spher sphericity of this flat plane is, right? Okay. That so for work. that to work, how close is the sun? How close is the sun? How close we is the sun? Wow, that's the first point he made. Just asking a question, very valid in this. That's the first time. Is that the first time he's spoken without uh, without spewing a logical fallacy? <laughs> So, I mean, we're, we're a good amount into the debate now. I think that's the first time he asked, like, a good faith question or honestly engaged in debate thus far. Yeah. I, the really sun, close, like the right sun. above the clouds, which we'd be able to see if you went up in a plane or a balloon, and it'd be, like, answer. right there. Well, that's a straw man logical fallacy, again, clearly, because how close is, I mean, between 93 million miles I mean, and thousands of miles or 100,000 miles, you wouldn't necessarily see it there, but he had to straw man that in there. Like, so he didn't last without the fallacy. He couldn't last. <laughs> and I mean, not only was that a straw man, but he, he, it's also kind of a false dichotomy because he's saying if it's close, it has to be right at the clouds or 93 million miles away. <laughs> There's no other option. I mean, what is this? I mean, this goof, like, I don't know. What does everybody make of this goof so far? Is he mentally disabled or is he simply uh, a troll intentionally trying to be as stupid as possible for trolling purposes? Huh? Hey, there, there, there's tons of videos explaining how the sun is an apparent object and we all see it in a different position. Oh, there's where, videos that say there, dumb things. No, so no, it's there's true. that. that <laughs> So that was a non sequitur on top of an ad hoc. <laughs> show science, show experiments. And when you try to triangulate the sun, um, there's a problem. You can't do it. You can't triangulate the sun. So how far the sun is, some flat earthers say it's 3,000 miles away. 
I don't like that answer. The math works. We can scale it and make it the 6, math miles works. Away. You've never done any math in your entire life. You hey, just hey, say hey, the hey, math stop, works stop and saying, expect people stop, to just stop being a condescending prick. All right. Try. Why try don't you stop minutes. condescending to the entire human race and pretending that every scientist ever is a liar and satanic deceiver? That's much more offensive than me calling you stupid, which you hey, are. Wow, so many fallacies. I mean, he just keeps upping the ante ad hom after ad hom after ad hom after straw man. <laughs> Obviously, that's not what Flat Earth Dave believes, but he has to pretend it is. So we actually left off another, man, I have to add another logical fallacy to the list, uh, appeal to extremes. Erroneously attempting to make a reasonable argument into an absurd one by taking the argument to the extreme. So if X is true, then Y must also be true where Y is the extreme of X. So there can't be just a couple of these deceivers. It has to be every single one and every single one has to be in on it because humans can't be uh, mistaken. <laughs> so this goof also used the appeal to extremes, which I believe is the, I mean, that's, it's also a straw man and a false dichotomy and all these other things. But I think appeal to extremes most accurately covers that one. Dave, what is the sun? What is the sun? It's a star. It's a star. It's a burning it's a star. It's, it's a it's a nuclear furnace that, that's working perfectly and it's bending space time where it could hold on to all of the planets that go all the way out to Pluto. Is that is that your belief? Well, Pluto's uh, now uh, a trans Neptunian oh, right. object. So, so we'll go. Yes. We'll go all, yes. All right. And then and then the, the sun's gravity ignores all of the moons because the moons are attracted to their planets and it negates mm -hmm. the sun. That's what you believe. What do you mean negates the sun? Yeah, negates so the sun. moons. So what you're saying is that like one of Jupiter's I'm moons should you. go flying towards the sun. Is I'm that not what you're that. saying? I'm not saying that at all. I'm asking you if uh -huh. you believe that the sun's gravity has no effect on moons. Yeah, it had. You can calculate. You can see. This is what real scientists and people who understand science can do calculations. So instead of you going, mm, I don't believe it. What you could do is you could take Newton's law of universal gravitation and take a moon, whatever moon, if you want to talk about our moon or one of Mars's or one of Jupiter's or whatever, and you could calculate a number that is the gravitational attraction between the sun and whatever moon you're talking about. So again, he's got a reductionism logical fallacy here as if that's the only way to do it, as if there are no other forces that could ever be acting upon it, as if there are no as of yet undiscovered forces, as if it definitely can only be a mass attraction, mass type gravity that could be responsible for this simply on the basis of this calculation without knowing what cause is it he's going to continue pretending he knows for sure so this is again i mean he's he's trying to set records here in the amount of logical fallacies used in the least amount of time and then you could do the same thing for the moon and its parent planet that it is orbiting which number do you think is going to be bigger buddy which and one so, do you think is going to so, be bigger and so the planet have, the one that it is orbiting around when we have a planetary alignment where all the planets are lining up all of that gravity hey, hang on you know what and you know what's curious too like i can't really flat earth dave here he's not really making too many claims here he's mostly asking questions about how the model works so he's not really making strong arguments here for the flat earth at all um, I don't know if that what what was his goal here, but in doing this, he's also not really committing logical fallacies because he's doing it this way. It, it, so, sorry, 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 sorry. I, I would like you to actually just address what I just said because this is what happens: is I say something, or a flatter debunker like myself says something that just annihilates the idiotic thing you just said, and then you just gish gallop to another point. So that's another ad hom and straw man because he's trying to pretend that, or I mean. Basically, it's, I mean, there's so many fallacies stacked here, but the psychological projection is accurate because when Flat Earth Dave an not completely annihilates Professor Dave, he doesn't address it at all, like the crepuscular rays, even though there's actually a really, e I mean, this is like maybe fourth, fifth graders can actually rebut C Flat Earth Dave with that. But Professor Dave can't. He's that clueless. But at least his subconscious picks up on it because his psychological projection here is on point. I would like you to admit that what you just said is stupid based on what I just said. But what he just said was, I mean, all he brought forth were fallacies. So why 
I mean, what is Flat Earth Dave supposed to do with the foul? I mean, he could point out the fallacies. He should. I don't know. Again, I'm not saying Flat Earth Dave is logical in any way. I am not saying his conclusions about anything are correct. He just happens to commit infinitely less logical fallacies than this uh, Professor Dave goof, which is nothing but faith and fallacy. So what is Flat Earth Dave supposed to do here? I, he should just address how logically fallacious this goof Professor Dave is. Now, one of the most logical Flat Earthers is Austin Witsit, or Witsit Gets It. I mean, he has a really strong command of logical fallacies. He should debate Professor Dave, because then he would be able to point out all these logical fallacies and uh, how goofy Professor Dave is here because he can't support a single point he just made. He's doing this religious regurgitation and accept it and expecting people to admit those religious regurgitations are actually true without backing it up. It's weird. Repeat what you said. I just explained to you why what you said about the sun and the moon is stupid. Another ad, huh? <laughs> Well, and well, you, you just you, jump to another talking point. Uh, uh, so you say that the gravity of the planet is holding on to these moons. Yeah. And it's so much stronger. Uh, let yeah. me finish. I'm, I'm reiterating what you say to show you how stupid it is. It's holding uh -huh. on to the. <laughs> <laughs> That's an ad hom for, for Flat Earth Dave. To the planets, but the sun's gravity, it can hold on to the planets, hold on to distant planets, but can't affect those moons at all can't affect like i just said you can do a calculation did you want to do the calculation do you want to do it together do you want to learn something today <laughs> do you want to learn something clearly professor dave doesn't want to learn about logical fallacies or the scientific method because again all he has are these reductionism logical fallacies as if that's the only explanation i mean you could also argue that's a false dichotomy because either this theory is i mean it's yeah this is just really rough it's so called David, newton's law of universal gravitation do you know what is in the denominator r squared it drops off gravity drops off by the square of the distance so as things get very very far away their gravitational influence is dramatically less exponentially so so when you have a moon that is right a uh, right near a planet the okay. gravitational effect is way more than the far away sun isn't that neat? Isn't that a neat thing that we can do with math and numbers that are real things that scientists do? Well, you can you can say one plus one, you, one unicorn plus one unicorn is two unicorns, but you still have to prove the unicorn is what you say it is, which again, Professor Dave does not, have, he's got this fundamental lack of understanding of basic children's level logical fallacies like burden of proof. Because if, let's say, just for the sake of argument, we are in some kind of giant planetarium, those objects aren't even solid or real. They're just holographic projections. Like, what are you calculating? There is no mass attracting mass. Instead of just going, uh, it, it doesn't make sense, so that's dumb. Another straw man. <laughs> you done? Yeah, what do you got? Do you I want to address this thing, or do you want to jump right to another thing? I, I want to jump to something else, because you say that the sun's gravity that can hold on to Neptune and Pluto can't mm -hmm. affect the moon, which is way closer to it, and that the Earth's gravity overwhelms that. That's stupid. That's me saying it. Why? You're the... You're the, the, the all you're saying professor. is that's stupid. All you're saying well, is that's and all, stupid. And all Why? Wow, the psychological projection is on point. All Professor Dave is saying that's stupid, but he can't actually support his argument. Arguments. Asking for a burden of proof to be met is never stupid. <laughs> Just like when he asked, when Professor Dave, uh, Professor Dave asked that question, how far is the sun? Flat Earth Dave didn't respond with, that's stupid. Because that's a valid question. If you're trying to say the sun is X distance, it's up to you to prove it. Saying is that it works because I could do math, but it's, it doesn't. It doesn't work. What do you mean it doesn't? Dave, model it. You, you ever... You know about the three body problem? I'm sure you know about that. Oh, the three body problem. So we can't hey, do Dave, calculations. Stop, stop being such a condescending prick. We already know. <laughs> just be a, just talk normal. Have a discussion. Sorry, hang on one second. This is serious. This private chat keeps covering the screen. Can this stop? Why is this doing this? Here's the thing. I would like to get off of the lights in the sky because I'd rather talk about the shape of the earth. Because they, they destroy the flat earth. <laughs> How so? But the lights in the sky have nothing to do with the flat earth. Okay, the so they, this they was my first talking point. Were we going to do the talking points that we prepared? Because my first talking point is about this, and it is an absolute annihilation of flat earth. That's why you don't want to talk about it. That's why you say, why do we look at the things in the sky to figure out the shape of the earth? Because that's how we figured it out 2,000 years ago, by looking at the, at the stars. 
in different ways. Next one, stars. There are stars. Stars is because you can't see through the Earth. Hemisphere, we can't see the Southern Cross. That's why in the Southern Hemisphere, we can't see Polaris. Next, even that they're all looking in completely different directions and seeing the same object often at the same time. On a globe, south actually means something. People who are looking south are all looking at the South Pole. They're all looking in the same direction, so that's why they all see the same thing. So, in your world, we have people standing upside down, and you're assuming hemispheres on a sphere. What do you mean upside down? What do you mean well, upside down? What well, does that mean? Com compared, their feet are antipodal to my feet, people in the south. Okay, so yours are upside down compared to them. Uh, What's the well, difference? Uh, What's I'm down saying, on a globe? I, I'm not in the globe model. <laughs> you didn't no, I did. So, on a flat Earth, if uh, you, you, you have a flat Earth, north is to the center, south is every direction away from the center. So, if the stars are going this way from my right shoulder to left shoulder, I'm looking at the North Star, they're going one way. When I turn around and I look at the south away from the center, they're coming from my left shoulder to my right shoulder. They just change directions, okay? There's no argument there. There's nothing to argue. That works okay, now do clockwise and counterclockwise well, because that's matter. really what we're talking about. What do you mean I, again, it doesn't matter? Again, you're David, talking about a direction. I'm talking I, about clockwise versus counterclockwise and, when you're looking at the poles. David, the optics the of poles. the sky. Well, so... <laughs> So now he's presupposing that there are poles. See, again, he's trying to plug in the variables of the heliocentric globe, which Flat Earth Dave does not believe in. He does not believe there's a South Pole. They don't see it at the same time, so people wait, looking so south can't see the night sky at the same time. They don't have a model. Okay. You stop being it's, a dick. Not, Your entire existence is being a dick to hey, all of science. Just going, stop being a going. dick. Still be looking in completely different directions, Explain that. You think just saying the word magnet is going to be an argument no, here look, that's going to work? Sit up however you want. We're talking about looking this way, I see the same thing. Look. And you're fixating on Santiago, Santiago and Johannesburg because you think that they're far enough apart that you're, they're not going to both be nighttime. I'm telling you, you can go any distance apart. Distance. How are those distances verified? Because if the flat earthers are claiming that those distances on the globe between those areas are not the actual distances, then how, how, how would any of this be proven? Again, a fundamental lack of understanding of the burden of proof, logical fallacy. Right, that's far enough apart that if you're both looking directly south, you're looking in different directions. And he's also kind of stacking on the circular reasoning, logical fallacy to that as well. And you can see the same thing. You cannot explain that. That's you why you're, you're trying to throw out jargon to confuse people. Oh, oh, that's another straw man. <laughs> he clearly defined it. And so if Professor Dave doesn't know what magnetic declination is and how it would affect the appearance of the constellations in the sky relative to position, he should not be discussing the subject, of course. <laughs> I'm not trying to throw out jargon to confuse people, David. That's exactly you, what you're doing. You, another straw man and ad hom. <laughs> when you're looking, you're looking towards the same area. <laughs> You, you're looking towards the, the, the same area. And but on uh, your pizza world, south is a different direction for every longitude line. Do you not understand that? On your pizza land, right, you have all these longitude lines directly south is towards your magic ice wall. Everybody looking magic south is looking wall. in a different direction. Magic ice wall. Yeah. So stop trying to skip to something else. Right? Are you denying that longitude lines, everybody on your pizza world is all looking in a completely right. different direction and, when they and, look south? And out? NASA, NASA or NOAA, they tell us, you know, what longitude lines are you talking about? They're, they tell us that uh, the magnetic declination is a different direction. Dimly grasping at words to try to make sense of something that is absolutely unexplainable for you. Optics in the sky, again, do not prove the shape of the Earth. You say that well, they I do. I just did prove they, it with that. I want to move on from looking at the lights in the sky to figure out, yeah, we hear you. Hear the because I prove the Earth is a sphere by using that. Um, we hear you, we don't care. It is. What, 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 I just finished proving the Earth is a sphere by looking at stars, something that we've been doing for thousands of years. Yeah, so, so, so says you. Okay. Yeah, and everybody who's ever lived. Asha isn't gonna really help you with that one. Sorry, buddy. They started in the 1950s. With infrared, now we're seeing things 500 to 1,000 miles away. The amount of curvature. No, you're not. I know. Yeah, we are. You're not. But Can't believe it's true. So he's saying, oh, no, you're not. It's not true. <laughs> go look at Jay Tolan Media's uh, channel. Uh, oh, go amazing. look at some lies that a flat earther said. That is real evidence. No. <laughs> so that would be a genetic 
logical fallacy and an ad hum. Man, Professor Dave's on a roll. Just fallacy, 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 fallacy. I mean, this has got to be the world record for most fallacies in a single debate in the least amount of time. Sure. It's well, it's Dave, it's well documented. You haven't looked at it. And then when you say the curvature formula is a parabola, I absolutely agree. It is over a thousand miles. It gets off a little bit, but anything under a thousand miles, all three formulas come within a very close proximity of each other. Yeah, right? but the problem is you can't do math, so you just do yeah. the math wrong. Purpose turn. Okay, so this one's really hilarious to me. Feel that? Are you gonna feel that? To think of the, the, the easiest I'm just to trying to think it. of something to say hey, that Dave, will make stop, sense. Stop being a dick, right? <laughs> if you're curving, that's acceleration. Okay? So Ooh, big just words. This, just this, using it properly, so you don't know your what vector acceleration. Force is equal to acceleration. Okay? Yeah, but I just and, told and you, you right? It, it takes it, a year to go around the sun. What? So, how? How much are you feeling? Do you want to calculate it? Should we calculate Dave, I'm it together? Talking about the spin of the Earth. The okay. spin of the Earth. The spin of the Earth. Right? You're dropping. The spin of the Earth is constant. Okay, that's ridiculous. Right? This one I figure. I think I figured out, and I think this one is genuine confusion on on your part. So I don't. I don't want to hold this one against you as much as other lies you tell, which are just blatant lies. Uh, one is just you not understanding you're you're trying to compare motion within the atmosphere of the earth so you're like oh my gosh something going through the atmosphere so fast and it's crazy and we feel it versus motion in frictionless space do you not understand that that's not the same thing right there's the atmosphere on earth is very thick there's a lot of friction right so when you try to move through air there's friction and it you matter. feel it so that's a red herring on on the part of so-called Professor Dave, because that's not really relevant. It doesn't matter. What do you mean it doesn't is, matter? It, if that air is spinning with the Earth, which you have to believe in your model, um, you would feel. Doesn't that, matter. It, you would feel that motion wave. You're in an airplane. Why would clothes. you feel the motion? Because Why would you feel the motion? Because you're because your your energy is changing directions, and you would have your energy a is changing no, directions. What about eclipses, guys? Oh, oh, what about hold on. eclipses? Hold on. That's no, my please. third no, talking point. I hope let, we get to it. Let's finish this point. Um, the, your mainstream science says that because of the spin of the Earth, because of the centrifugal force, that the water bulges at the equator 14 miles high. What? This is what Neil deGrasse Tyson and science tells us about the spin of the Earth. The water no, at the doesn't. equator. Yes, it does. It bulges no, it 14 doesn't. miles high. <laughs> he actually did say that. So this just denial of, I mean, what would you even place this in? The tide doesn't actually come in and out. There is a bulge of water, two of them, on opposite sides of the Earth, caused by the sun and the moon. And Earth turns inside that bulge. When we say the water rises and falls tidally, what's happening is we are rotating into the bulge and then out of the bulge. So the bulge is already it's there. It's already there. And all we kind of do is pass through it's the pass bulge. Pass through and the water gets high mm -hmm. and it gets low. So that's the clip there from Neil deGrasse Tyson here. And of course, Professor Dave is so clueless he doesn't even know about the equatorial bulge. <laughs> That's his own model that he's defending on blind faith and logical fallacies. Makes the Earth 29 miles wider at the equator. No, no, <laughs> that's the Earth, not the water. There is a bulge of water, of water, of water. What are you talking about? There is a bulge of water, of water, of water. Are you no, a moron? No. There is a bulge of water, of water, of water. No. Dude, the, the equate, the, the, the radius, the, this is this is what happened. You're very confused. Well, let me ask the, you a question. The, no, 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 stop, because you just said a very specific number, and I know why you said that number. The diameter of the Earth is about 27 miles greater at the equator. That's the whole Earth. You're trying to pretend that it's all water, that there's just this big thing of so, water that's 14 miles? Is that what you're so, genuinely trying to say? So, Are you that so, stupid? It, there is a bulge of water, of water, of water. <laughs> what a goof. <laughs> Well, that's what Neil deGrasse Tyson says. But let's no, say, he didn't uh, say I'll, I'll, that. I'll, there is a bulge of water, of water, of water. Let's no, say, he didn't uh, say I'll, that. I'll, there is a bulge of water, of water, of water. Go with you. I'll go with you. The Earth is bulging. So does that yeah. mean that water, large bodies of water at rest near the equator, if you hung a plumb line over it, that it wouldn't be perpendicular to the to the surface of the water? It would be off just a little bit because of that bulge, or does gravity? Well, what is, is, 
What does the bulge of the equator have to do with the water? There is a bulge of water, two of them, on opposite sides of the Earth. Well, because the, the gravity pulls everything to the center of the Earth in yeah. your all world. Does Professor Dave not know that there's water, that there's oceans? <laughs> I mean, his argument here, it's, it's making it seem like he's not aware that the ocean is on the Earth, so therefore... The uh, any kind of bulge would affect the water because I mean the Earth is mostly water according to his mind. I mean this level of cluelessness. I mean this truly is record breaking. And if we have a bulge at the equator, a plumb line which should be vertical, um, it should be perpendicular to the water, would not be perpendicular to the water because the water Why? would be sloping away because we have a bulge. What you do you mean sloping away? Out. Okay, a bulge isn't, first of all, you're, uh, as I just said, this has nothing to do with the water. There is a bulge of water, two of them, on opposite sides of the earth. It's the shape of the earth itself, so you're just completely wrong <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> there is a bulge of water, two of them, on opposite sides of the earth. But second of all, what, what this is the thing with you guys. You think that the curvature of the earth is supposed to be, you're talking about a plumb line. Do you think that the curvature of the earth is supposed to be like this or something? Do you have no idea how big the earth is? Do you not understand that the curvature is not detectable at the surface of the earth? I mean, <laughs> it's not detectable, yet he's claiming that a ship would disappear over the edge if that's what he's claiming, unless he doesn't claim that. But he claimed that the other guy doesn't know math because he doesn't understand any of these arguments. So the psychological projection just off the charts here. He doesn't understand any of it, yet he continues to argue. <laughs> It's really well, look, look, big. It's a really big go over the horizon. We can see boats huh? go over the horizon. We can see boats go over the horizon, but we can't see the curve, right? Dave, according to your math, there are certain things that should be behind a curve at certain distances, but we can yeah, see the curve. We but, can see no, but we can't. You just lie about them. Who's the one that just said you can't detect it? <laughs> You just you said earlier that we can see things a thousand miles away. Are you out of your mind? Everybody should be able to take a telescope then and see something a thousand miles away. Why can't they? Oh, that's a great argument. So this goof doesn't know about the visibility index. So he just did, uh, I mean, he just stacked a few more logical fallacies there, the false dichotomy. Either the, if the earth is flat, you see forever. There's just no such thing as precipitation. There's no such thing as, as rain or any precipitation. There's no such thing as a visibility index. I mean, this level of goofery. And again, he, an argument from a, a reductive logical fallacy here, assuming there wouldn't be other variables like precipitation, which is obviously true. I mean, he's never heard of fog. I mean, what kind of goofery is this? <laughs> Dave, you don't know where it was taking it from. It, it's infrared cameras. Go look at JTOL and Media One oh. and, and watch all of the... He He's the special it. one. He can do it. Nobody else can do it. Actually, Nobody no, else other, can other get this can uh, footage. So, oh, but they don't. Dave, let me they, ask you a question. They just don't because they don't feel like it. Is, is Straw man, genetic logical fallacy. There's a whole bunch of infrared footage. There's infrared footage from planes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he's so busy interrupting, trying to set the world record for logical fallacies that, uh, or again, if he just gets at a ki a kick out of making himself look this stupid and embarrassing himself to this level, I mean, bravo, because he accomplished that. <laughs> Do you believe that the ground is horizontal? It's it's almost perfectly horizontal. Yes. Okay. Are, are horizontals parallel? <laughs> if you are okay. horizontals parallel? That's a question. If, I think what you're trying to ask is if you have parallel planes, right? If you have two two flat planes, can they be made parallel? Yes, two flat planes yes, can be made parallel. Been. Well, what are you saying? Because nobody what has what any I'm clue saying what you're saying. If you have a horizontal line on Earth, then there's only one point that would be touching the earth and the rest would just rise up into space. But all horizontal lines li line up with the horizontal horizon. <coughs> okay, they're all parallel. Yeah, do right? they or do they just look like that because your eyes suck and they can't, dis they can't, they can't <coughs> distinguish between uh, arc seconds of angle? Oh, okay. So maybe he's not mentally disabled. So he's just intellectually dishonest because all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he's claiming what you see might not be true. So the hypocrisy off the charts here, because earlier 
you look through a telescope, something looks round, all of a sudden it has to be a sphere because it looks like it. And then all of a sudden, when it comes to parallel lines in the distance, all of a sudden he's saying your eyes suck and it might not look the way it is. <laughs> so so he's not mentally disabled. So this is all an act of just playing stupid in an intellectually dishonest fashion. Well, at least we have evidence of that now. All right. Well, let me let me phrase looking it this way. looking no. like it perfectly overlaps doesn't mean that it perfectly overlaps. Oh my God. Right? Just because the horizon only, looks only, flat seven, doesn't mean left. it's perfectly I flat. Ten minutes left, guys, to move on to eclipses. Eclipses. Ten minutes left. I didn't even get to do all my. I did one of my things. Maybe he shouldn't interrupt so much then, because <laughs> Flat Earth Dave could have made his points a lot quicker without the fifty million interruptions per point. <laughs> it could I be gotta, thirteen minutes. My my it question does, is. The What's top the of the World eclipses? Trade Towers, when they were up, are those floors larger than the lower floors? Because for them to be perpendicular, they would have to get larger, right? How far apart were they? What? What? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, I don't know what Flat Earth Dave is getting at there. I mean, we're going to have to go false cause on that one because I don't see the relationship there. I mean, he would... Again, I mean, he didn't explain that at all. Maybe he's got a point to it, but as of yet, unexplained points, false cause for, for Flat Earth Dave there. How far apart were the towers? I don't know, but I'm asking you about one tower. Okay, but it doesn't matter. Look, you're, okay, it doesn't matter if we're talking about the distance between the towers or the width of a tower. Do you know how much curvature there is over such a small distance? It is so small that it is 100% negligible. What are you not understanding about that? So that's appeal to extremes. And also, he's claiming it's negligible. I mean, that's... I, I, I'm going to give him a little bit of a break here because at least it looks like he's attempting to at least do some kind of an argument instead of just constant ad homs. Our, the our earth is really big. So, so you, do you believe that horizontal lines are parallel? If you make them parallel, what are you talking about? I'm talking about <laughs> horizontal lines on Earth. When you're, you know, surveying the land and you have a horizontal line, another one, another one, another one, are they parallel? If you make them parallel, what, the, the, they're not lines, right? They're not actual lines. Do you know that lines are just approximations, right? We can draw lines, we can graph lines and do math in perfect Euclidean geometry. The Earth has a spherical surface. So yeah, we can go, that's a line and that's a line. And if we're just looking at less than a mile, yeah, it looks really straight. But he's not talking about less than a mile. Flat Earth Dave is specifically talking about a thousand miles. <laughs> so this would be a red herring as well and a circular reasoning logical fallacy. But it's not because the earth is a sphere. And, and even a straw man, because because Dave is not alleging that. So has any, you're has, not comprehending scale. That's has the problem. Anybody and perfect psychological projection there as well. Measured curvature in large body of water at rest. The large body of water needs a container to hold it in place. And has anyone measured any curvature on resting water? No, the, okay. only the, the, your, your drop and your wave, which is in your stupid video that got 10 million views. Um, drop that's, and that's, wave? That's, I don't even know what you're talking about. You talked about water curves. And you showed a drop of <laughs> oh, water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, I know what you're talking about. That, that, that is just a complete straw man. Well, it's sense. not. But but actually, this is what's funniest to me, is that your flatter, you debunk yourself with this level water thing. Because the funny thing is that, uh, so tides exist, right? And so on your little pizza world, tides are these little mounds of water that kind of travel around. I don't really know how else you can explain this. But uh, right, tides exist, right? Yeah, they do, but they don't correlate to the sun and the moon. They're, they're, it's, there's, there's stop, no stop, 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 yeah. stop, stop. So fl Flat Earth Dave is demonstrating how he's strawmanning and he's desperate to get him to stop exposing his own cluelessness, <laughs> Professor Dave's cluelessness here. He gets so triggered to say, stop, 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 don't expose my cluelessness. <laughs> Stop, yeah. stop, stop. No sun and the moon. No sun and moon. There are the, uh, the, 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 the water levels go up and down, right? And in different places, not everywhere at the same time, right? So on your little pizza world, you, you you've got a little mess. Hold on, you, you've got a little mound of water that's just kind of traveling around. So I'm sorry, but water isn't level on your pizza world either. Dave, what causes your high tide? 
The moon? What causes tides? The moon yeah. and, well, there's solar tides and there's lunar tides. Right. And so when there's a new moon, which means the sun and the moon yeah. are on the same side of the earth, the tide should be bigger, but there's not. There's bigger tides when they're No, opposing. it is. No, they're not. No, no, it is. You're absolutely wrong. No, I'm but not. And you right. can Google it right now. What are yeah. you talking about? <laughs> when the solar and lunar tides align, that's the highest tide. Right, guys. We've you're got, just we've done saying it's not because you're <laughs> just lying. Um, so this is the funny thing about your pizza world is that uh, in the northern hemisphere, things are kind of OK. Not really. But in the southern hemisphere, it all goes to crap. And so to try to explain night and day and seasons, which you absolutely cannot do, uh, you try to make the sun go way out towards the bottom. And you think that works because it makes it uh, the longer nights right uh, up in the north. But uh, the problem is in the southern hemisphere, everything is terrible because you've got the sun way out towards the edge. And uh, therefore, it shouldn't be able to illuminate very much of the Earth. But in the Southern Hemisphere, in like December and January, you've got regions like, uh, you know, towards the southern ends of those continents that are, are almost day, almost all day. So you've got you know, 19, 20 hours of daylight. In the Southern Hemisphere? What flat earther made that claim? It looks like, I don't know what Flat Earth Dave is, is doing here. I guess maybe he's just sick and tired of arguing with this goof who's got nothing but fallacies, but I haven't heard that claim. I've heard the opposite claim. Some Flat Earthers say that there is no 24-hour sun in Antarctica, but, I mean, let's continue here anyway. So you've got this sun that's traveling around way out towards the edge, because this is how you like to do it, uh, and it is somehow illuminating almost all of the outer regions of your pizza world, uh, and yet it is somehow not illuminating the center because areas towards the North Pole have 24 hours of night uh, at that time. So unfortunately, you can't do the like, Antarctica isn't real, so the South Pole, the, so the uh, that's not a thing. Uh, these are places where people live. We don't say live, Antarctica and, uh, is not real. We don't say that at all. You say No, that. you say the South Pole isn't real. We don't. We, Even we, though there's people go there and work there and people work at the south pole yeah yeah prove it okay so the, <laughs> you the can get a it, job there did you know that civilians so, can get jobs so, so the way it you, works, should, you should apply for one i think that'd be a cool video for you to Dave, do on your on your upside down world on your ball world uh, in the north uh norway in northern alaska we have the 24-hour sun in june okay and we see the sun and it's been filmed by millions of people um mm -hmm. and you can watch the sun circle around Makes perfect sense on a ball. Makes perfect sense on flat Earth. We're on the same page there. But twelve months, yeah, six really, months, six months later, you. six months later at equal yeah. southern latitudes, you should see the same. But there's no video yeah, of do. the. No, no, you don't. There's no video of the 24 hours sun. There's three or four fake videos, yes. clearly fake, taken apart. I'm talking, right? I didn't interrupt <laughs> you. And uh, and there's no 24 hour sun. The sun antarchs away from you. It comes towards you and it goes away. Okay. Unlike the Arctic where it's circling around. I'm still talking. Okay. And there's no 24 hours of daylight. But it, if you add a dome in there, and again, we're looking at the lights in the sky, <laughs> which is something that doesn't prove either. Um, when you bring the sun closer to the dome, it wraps around. And we could show you this, you know, get a dome, get a glass, move the light, and you'll see that the light wraps around, and that's exactly what we see in Antarctica. Okay, so I know that you can do your fun little middle school science project where you have a little uh, you know, serving tray thing and you make a flashlight do funny things, but you cannot make it actually. So this is why you have your dumb little app, your little thing and your sun and stuff. It doesn't actually show the regions of actual daylight and, and nighttime. It just shows like a little cartoon. You don't actually see. It doesn't actually do these patterns. So when you're called out on this, instead of going, oh, my app shows the actual patterns and this crazy arc that would that would make sense. So uh, first of all, I'm sorry, even though the, there are videos at the South Pole, I'm sorry that Antarctica is not where a bunch of people live. So we don't have all of these videos like we do way up it towards the North Pole. But again, as I said, it, you know, the way so southern region of, Anta of, of, uh, of Argentina, like I did my video, Ush Ushaya or whatever it's called. Which, uh, cartoon do you which cartoon do you like the best showing Antarctica? What do you mean, which cartoon? Which cartoon? There's no pictures of Antarctica from space. Okay, well, there are, so that's really dumb, but no, let me continue not. demolishing. Okay, stop. I'm going to continue demolishing the idi idiotic thing you just said uh, earlier. So you can do your little thing. Flat Earthers love to do their little middle, middle school science projects. So, okay, you've got the thing and blah, blah, blah. So why can't your Flat Earth app do it? Why can't you actually show the regions of day and night? Why can't you look at that and go, yeah, look at that. I see the light illuminating this part of the, of the, of the Flat Earth. 
right? And I can see that we have 20 hours of sunlight in, in, uh, in Southern Argentina. And I can see that you just have a little cartoon doing nonsense. And then all of your idiot people who buy the thing, they're not like, Oh, that looks cool. And they don't actually look at what it does at all. Right. Why can't you, why can't you have it show that? Right. It, it shows uh, pretty accurately the amount of day and night, and but I can't no, show it, it. Well, I can't show it because the far the, if on the latitude line that you're on, um, it's different where you are. So I have to kind of blend them together. It's just a tool to show the amount how. of day and night depends. The, the amount of day and night that objectively happens in a place depends on your latitude. <laughs> well, again, this is an issue. There's there's two sides on the issue here because if you burden of proof is on positive claims. So if Professor Dave wants to claim that the continents are X distance apart, he would have to prove that as well as anything. Now the flat earthers would also have to prove that, but some of the flat earthers are saying that they don't know the distances because they can't verify them. So obviously that's not proof for a flat earth, but this is clearly another reductive logical fallacy and also false cause logical fa I mean, there's just so many fallacies here that Professor Dave is just, I mean, this is just world record stuff here. Because if you don't know all of those parameters, how would you know exactly how many hours occurs where if you can't verify where you are in relation to a different place? Which you would need to do to prove either model, of course. Absolutely, 100%, on your ball too. When I'm in the north, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't think you winter, understand, it, I don't no, think no, you no, understand no, no, what I just it, said. It, no, no, you don't understand what I just said. So no, I it, definitely so, know that you're not saying anything. I'm saying that in, in that town in Argentina, there is an objective time where the sun rises and sets. Yes, and where it, you are doesn't there, change that. There's no place that you have 17 hours of sun. You have daylight. Daylight is the illumination of the sky. It's not the sun. From and, the sun. No, the sun. Is you're saying that daylight is not from the sun? Absolutely. So, if, if the sunrise, where is it from? If, if, if the sun rises, it's making on, the sunlight. Then, uh, no, no, the sun is uh, is lighting up the sky. It's like uh -huh. a photographer. You have your main light, and then you have your backlight. The sky is the daylight. When the sun is on the east side of your house, right on the horizon, go to the back side of your house. You can read the newspaper. Well, where's that? That sunlight's not. What's it going through your house? It's lighting up the sky. It's and that's, scattered by atmospheric particles. That's what. That's it's what you still say. sunlight. Yeah. Well, that's what you say to say a well, thing well, that Dave, explains why come, what I just said is come, stupid and I have no come, way to combat it. Which is exactly what Professor Dave did this entire time. <laughs> How come nobody has filmed the 24-hour sun in Antarctica? They have. You I just mean, say it's a lie. No, they no, have and you it, just go, it. oh, that's fake. Yeah. No, we don't. We don't just go, oh, that's fake. We but show guess you what? Fake. That's why in my video, I don't talk about, Ant about Antarctica because no. you just say it's fake. That's why I picked Southern Argentina because people live there and they have 19 hours of daylight and you can't explain it because it's I, this I huge. I did explain it. You can't No, you didn't. You just it. said Absolutely. there's a glass thing in the flashlight. You're just right. doing a middle school science project. You're not actually explaining anything. You're just going, oh, I did a thing in my living room. So all of science is wrong. That's what you're doing. <laughs> and again, he's using he's using the word science to describe his religion of scientism, because real science he would able to he would be able to clearly show uh, why it's not X Y Z and it's A B C instead. He'll clearly show that with controls, which he hasn't been able to support any of his positions because he doesn't understand the burden of proof, logical fallacies, or any of these other children's level logical fallacies. Now. Flat Earth Dave didn't do any of that either. He didn't prove his point in any way either. But the fallacy count here, there's a staggering difference. I mean, this was just clear obliteration in terms of logical debate. You don't. The globe, the I wish I had the slide because the globe. Dave, the optics of the sky mm. are no way to prove the shape of the Earth. You can. You well, can, they are. Yeah. Well. And I just did world. it twice. Yeah. Well, keep, and you have no way to combat it. anything I just it, said. So it, that's it, why you it. say that thing over. Can I just in, interrupt? If the, if the if the if the globe was true, then when in Antarctica in the in December, you should be able to see the sun circle all the way around without dropping. And you do. You can. Uh, Dave, I've seen loads of documentaries you, where you, that happens. You can. You cannot see it. It's absolutely untrue. And we show the the, the the best one that they have, they show a 24 hours of the sun going around. And when it comes around, not only is it the same clouds, the sun is in a completely different position. Like, And just to reiterate, again, the burden of proof is on the positive claim. You can't just bring Bigfoot and ghost videos and expect people to believe it. Now, if they cannot provide the proof and they're just simply saying there is proof, 
they're on the fallacious side. Months different position. So it's all camera trickery and it's provable. It's not just us saying it. So when you watch- No, it, it is like, just oh, you saying it. Yeah, well, I'm not true. And I do some research, yeah. Dave, and then uh, get out of your little ball model and, and you'll you'll see. We don't mm. live upside down on a space ball flying through an- Down is towards field. the center of the earth. Nobody is upside down. That's one of the dumbest things you morons say. Down yeah. is towards the center of the earth. Nobody yeah. is upside so down. On your world, there's people upside down relative to me. And you're upside down relative to them. It's a yeah, sphere. That, Who cares? Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Good. Your <laughs> response to basic shapes is good luck with that. Yeah. Are you five years old? You have the intellect of a five year old. Wow, the psychological projection of Professor Dave is really on point. I mean, this might be world record, not only most logical fallacies in the least amount of time, but most accurate psychological projection in the least amount of time. <laughs> you can't understand, like, little hey, kids understand this stuff, you I, know that? I just want to say that you're more of a condescending prick than I thought. You, well, you, I, I wouldn't say you're more than anything I thought. I know what you are, but uh, I'm sorry, again, to reiterate, reiterate for the third time, your entire identity is based on the, the idea that all the scientists in the entire world nope. are lying deceivers. Nope. So you're true. a condescending nope. douchebag. You said. And me That's calling you, you stupid, which you are, is does not hold a candle uh, to right, what John. you are. That's what he claims. I don't believe that. Um, and well, that's what, I've that's got, what you're I've got another question for other Dave, oh. Professor Dave. Um, yeah. Just so obviously, I can see. I mean, it, it means a lot to you as, as as on the other side, of course. Why does it annoy you so much, the flat Earth stuff? Because it's so. I, I mean, first of all, a lot of what I do. Uh, I mean, I do mainly academic tutorials, but I also address misinformation. I'm very passionate about uh, public science literacy and science denial. And flat Earth is the bottom of the barrel. So I go after like anti-vaxxers and stuff like that. And that is a little more oh. sophisticated. And you have to actually understand a little bit of biochemistry, a little bit of immunology and things like that. Flat Earth is the only one. I just proved the Earth is a sphere multiple times in this exchange. <laughs> So if he's that, if he doesn't even understand, as he said, five-year-old stuff, five-year-old science, five-year-old logical fallacies, fallacies and faith are not proof. So again, this is, he's just a leading member of the scientism cult where he doesn't understand the difference between science and scientism. And then he gets all triggered and offended and he has to hallucinate that anybody that doesn't keep the faith, the same faith that he does is misinformation. <laughs> Based on looking at things in the sky and thinking, that's hey, how I we figured out the earth is a sphere two thousand, several thousand years ago. It's like the first thing we figured out. So hey, a, this is why it's so offensive, because it is a denial of literally all of science. Astronomy, all wrong. Geology, all wrong. Physics, all wrong. It's so unbelievably offensive to the entire human race. That's why you're a douchebag and me calling you stupid has is nowhere near the magnitude of douchebaggery that is your entire identity. <laughs> Wow, that was a world record psychological projection rant. I mean, bravo, Professor Dave. This has to be the go-to example for psychological projection now. Hmm. You're talking so, to him, not me, right? Sorry, no. yeah. <laughs> to Davey boy over there. So, so he believes that scientists that he never met 2,000 years ago proved that the Earth is a globe, when in reality, in the 1940s and 50s and up to the early 60s, they were still teaching flat Earth in no. school here. No, absolutely. they weren't. That's absolutely. just the thing you're saying. That's an There's truth. globes from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. You can't just say that. Like, yeah. you show me something. Show me a textbook. You can't just say, oh, this thing I made up is true. You're an idiot. What are you talking about? We've known the Ptolemaic model, which was reign supreme from, like, you know, 100 or or whatever to took the copernican model used a spherical earth geocentrism used a spherical earth and then copernicus and kepler happened and they wrote books by the way they wrote books and you can read them that uh, they exist can and I we've known about heliocentrism for 500 years since so i don't know what you're talking about you are completely pulling that out of your ass can, can nobody I, taught a flat earth anywhere for can we, any measurable amount of time can we um can we have dave uh tell us how seasons happen on on the globe Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wish I had the graphic because it really works really well. So there's a tilt in Earth's rotational axis, right? It's tilted like this. So one of the hemispheres is 
is exposing more of it itself to the sun, right? And so you get more direct light versus, so let's say this is the northern hemisphere, this is the southern hemisphere. More of the southern, hem uh, the northern hemisphere is exposed to direct sunlight. So you have longer daylight, right? So it's so hard to just do uh, in my hand like this. No, no, I, I get it. I, but, I, I understand. Yeah. You get it, it, it when we're tilted towards it, the sunlight's hitting direct and it's war, it's, it's more intensified here. And down here, it's spread out more. Makes sense. I yeah, because it. of the curvature. So it has I to spread it. out around, okay. around a greater area. More. But isn't the sun so large that all of the, the rays leaving the sun are parallel? And, and how would, why wouldn't the parallel rays that are a little off to the left, you know, hit us direct? Are, are, there, are the rays leaving the sun parallel or are they leaving not parallel? Okay, when you, have a, when you have a certain, okay, here's a lateral distance. If the sun is directly hitting, the, the part of the earth is directly facing it, that's a certain area. Then if you move this way, we have the same lateral distance, but there's a lot of curvature here. It's covering a greater surface area. Uh, so I have right? question. So, so can the Earth? The Earth. Can okay. Do you want to admit that I just explained that perfectly, and that I, your talking I, I, point I, was invalid? I know. I, I admit that you explained that perfectly, but I have okay, to ask great. a question. So we have the pole here, and we tilt. We tilt the Earth. Okay. Mm -hmm. And can you tilt the Earth this way? That's a tilt, also, right? Absolutely. You, what? If we're, if, You're just turning no, it. What are you doing? So no, no. What I'm showing you is here. Here, we <coughs> let's say the sun is over there, and we tilt, and we're now directly towards the. We have a more direct angle. We're in mm -hmm. agreement on, on this. But if I'm here, and I tilt it this way, well, now the sun is lower. It's it's again. It's now skimming. It's now skimming, and it's it's not hitting as direct. So here's the problem with your seasons in the north here. In December, when we're three million miles closer to the sun, but we'll just ignore that because it's not sig significant. Yeah, it's um, not significant, it's not so significant. I don't know why I'm, you said I'm, it. I'm, well, we're three million miles closer. At sunrise, in, uh, no, in, in December, at, um, at noon, when the sun is 50 degrees in the sky, and I look at the sun, I can't feel, the, I can barely feel it on my face. I, I can't get a tan, right? But in June, when we're farther away from the sun, doesn't matter, and at sunrise, when the sun is literally an 89 degree tilt, the worst possible angle, as soon as it shows up on the horizon, I can feel the heat and I can get a tan. Why is that? Because in your world, it should be arctically freezing every morning in the all year long. I in genuinely have no idea what you're saying. You're <laughs> so he couldn't even follow the basics there. I mean, a child could understand that argument. I mean, if you put... Uh, you could do this with uh, a fire, a campfire, and you can turn your body towards the campfire, move a little closer, obviously it should be hotter, whether it's on your knee or your elbow, if you're closer to it. So this goof, he's either pretending he didn't understand the argument because he knew he knows that he has no answer. He's too dumb to come up with an answer or rebuttal of any kind. So he has to pretend he didn't understand it, or he truly does have some kind of mental disability and really didn't understand that very basic argument. Throwing yeah, around you, eighty nine you, degree. I have no I, idea what you're I, talking I, about. Okay, so you have the you have the the sun here, right? The sun, and we're we're tilted, so it's thirty four degree tilt. Well, if I tilted it all the way down to the horizon, so I'm here. I wonder. I wonder if Sean Atwood understands the point he made and also this Andrew guy because they're not laughing anymore. They look kind of serious. Did they understand the point he made? And they don't have a rebuttal for it. They know that, and Professor Dave basically just threw in the towel there admitting that he doesn't have the intellect to understand that basic point. So, I mean, what's going on here? <laughs> and the sun's over here, okay? That's an 89 degree tilt, one degree off the horizon, right? Any farther mm -hmm. it would be below the horizon. The sun's I'm already it's, lost. I have no idea what you're saying. It's because you're stupid, Dave. Right? Five minutes no, left, guys. Because you're Five not minutes. saying anything. I, I, I you're just going to tilt it this I, way. I this has nothing again. to do with anything. Is that a logical fallacy? He's saying he doesn't understand anything. And Professor Dave, because you're stupid, but he did explain it. So technically, that wouldn't be a logical fallacy, I don't believe. Because if we're just using the strict definition of the word stupid, he, uh, Flat Earth Dave explained this two times already, very clearly and succinctly. I mean, I don't know how to explain that even more base, even without the demonstration. I mean, does he not understand the point? If you're slightly closer to the fire, it should feel warmer. I mean, this isn't rocket science. <laughs> if the Earth is tilted... 34 degrees. That's it's how 23 we are. Degrees, something 20, like that. 23 degrees. 23 degrees, whatever. If we tilted it 90 degrees, the sun would set. 
It would set over the pole, which doesn't happen. So the five, farther, five minutes the, left, guys. Five the, minutes the left. The farther, <clears throat> the farther I tilt it, the more spread out those rays are. Well, the spin is the equivalent to the tilt. So when the sun is, when I'm spinning away from the sun, the sun's getting lower and lower and lower. It's spreading out across the sky. The does this guy not? Does Professor Dave not even understand how the heliocentric model works? in terms of where the globe would be as it's rotating versus where the sun would be if it's rotating away. I mean, Professor Dave genuinely, I mean, I don't know if he's faking this level of stupid right now. He genuinely seems confused and does not seem to have the mental processing power to even understand what Flat Earth Dave is saying. Across the world, it should get colder and colder and colder because that sun is what spreading out. Spreading across. You understand that there's always a face of the Earth. There's always the sun I'm, is always a, is hitting half of the Earth. Not not Ooh. according to time and date. All right, but that the that's sun whole isn't other. always hitting half of the Earth. On the ball, it would be, but it doesn't. Yeah, that's not, that's not well, it saying. does but though. So what thing, are you talking David, about, David? You're not listening. Okay, I, I am. You're tilt, just not saying tilt, anything. I, <laughs> so he's pretending that Flat Earth Dave didn't make an argument because he was too dumb to understand. <laughs> I mean, what would that be on the part? I mean, would that technically be a straw man and an ad hom rolled into one? <laughs> and tilt. So if we were if we're tilted away from the sun, we have our winter. And if I tilted farther, it gets really cold because Antarctica or the Arctic is tilted farther away. That's why it's cold in your world. Right, but it's it, not. What do you mean? If if we tilt it further, it's not tilted further. It's we, it's a twenty three degree right. axial and, tilt. And, so what do you why, mean tilt it further? What are you why talking is it, about? Why is it colder in the Arctic in the winter than it's cold than it is in Florida in the winter? I just explained it earlier. Well, well, I, it's I, the, I know I, Dave, it's getting I, I, more direct sunlight. Uh, if absolutely, the, absolutely. So don't interrupt. On, if so, the look, if the axis Dave. is tilted away, then it is. Dude, I just Dave, explained Dave. this. How do you not get this? I really do wonder if Andrew gets this because Andrew and Sean. I mean, I don't again. Like I said, I don't know about Sean. He looks like he has a mental disability most of the time. He can't even tell what's going on, so he can he just laughs at stuff. But before he looked pretty serious. Is it possible he did understand Flat Earth Dave point and he there's no rebuttal here from these gifts? No, no, no. You're not getting it. Listen. Okay, so you can just say that, but I actually no, no, explained I, it. You're you're not getting this. Okay. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Dave, Dave, no, we've run out, on, Dave, we've I, run out of time. We've run out I'm, of time. I'm filming this. Listen. Well, I'm just gonna let you guys tell the viewers where they can find you and support you. So Professor yeah. Dave, we'll start Dave, with you. you don't thank get you for it. coming on, Professor Dave. <laughs> Maybe Sean Atwood did really understand, so he had to shut this thing down quick. <laughs> Thank can you. you. Tell, can you tell the viewers where they can find and support you, please? Flatter Professor Dave, Dave explains. Flatter oh, Dave. sorry. Com. This world is not what you think it is. This world is not what you think it is. Go, go.